Hey everyone, it's Zweb here again with the third part to our Angular Signals introduction where we build a simple contacts app. In this part, we are use the computed and the effect primitives just introduced by the Angular team. So let's get started. And let's look at the next primitive which we talked about and that is a computed. So a good example of computed in our case here would be to show the number of the contacts right at the top in this toolbar. So let's go in our service and let's define a new signal here. Remember the computed is also a signal but it's just read only. So let's define a computed here and let's call this total contacts. All right. And this is just a computed. Let's include it from angular core. Computed also just returns a function like this. And then you can specify how you want to compute this. So in this case, we are just going to do this dot contacts. We get the value in the same way that we did in the template and we just use the length function of this array. Great. So we have the total context. Now, how do we want to show it? We are going to go back since we are in a service, we can go back to any component and we can get this. So we are going to go back in our main base component, app component. And here we are going to add our total contacts. We're going to inject our service and we're going to refer to the total contacts here. And then right besides this, we can simply use this total contacts and call it like a function. This is going to access the value of the signal. Great, let's test this out. Great, so now we can see the total um, length of the contacts is here. And now the cool thing is when we update it, for example, when we delete one of them, this is going to automatically update because our original contacts list signal is getting updated and the computed gets updated based on that signal. And when we add a new contact, we can test it out again. So we can do zen at gmail.com and when we save it, we can see that this keeps getting updated all the time. So if you have worked with observables, this is very similar to an observable, but it is much easier to work with and it, it doesn't handle asynchronous reactivity. It only handles synchronous react. Okay. The last thing we need to do is to just demonstrate how an effect works, which is the third reactive primitive that we talked about. Okay. Okay. So for effects, uh, the angular team itself says that an effect should be used sparingly, but it has its use cases in, for example, you want to log some, uh, uh, change that is happening in a signal, or you want to call some HTTP request. Uh, in response to some signal changing. In my case, in the uh, in the scenario of the app that we are building, what I want to do is I want to restrict adding contacts when the contacts length reaches a certain number. So for example, uh, if we go back to our contact service and we have about 20 contacts in our initial value, uh, let's add a specific, let's say um, computed here, which could be called maximum reached. Now this would be a computed on a pattern similar to what we built for total contacts. But in this case, we are going to give either a Boolean, either a true or a false. So uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to do this to total contact. So when the total contact contacts are greater than or equals to let's say 21 just to get started that means that the maximum has been reached now two things should happen when the maximum has been reached one thing is that the user should be shown a notification using a snack bar in the material components to tell the user that okay you have reached your maximum limit and you cannot add more co uh, contracts till you delete some of them all right and the second thing we want to do is we want to disable the add button as well but we're going to uh, uh, come to that disabling part in a bit so how do we do that now we have this maximum reach signal which we can use so let's go back to our app component and define an effect to show the notification right let's first you uh, define a snack bar here and let's also include the snack bar module here all right and inject the snack bar here then we are going to specify the effect now this has to be in a constructor and that is just how it is so let's put an effect from this so this is also just a function which is called whenever any of its dependent signals have changed so in our case our dependent signal is okay i think we need to refactor this a bit so we can also do contact service here so that we can use this later on okay so here we, we can just check if this dot contact service dot maximum reached see again we're using uh, the signal in the same value uh, just like we call a function so if we have maximum reach that means the maximum has been reached we can just do snack bar dot open and let's give it a message of please let's give it a message of you have reached your remit please remove some contacts before adding again all right great so let's test this out now so if you can see now you have our 20 contacts and the 21 is our limit so when we add it uh, when we add the next one we should receive a message here so let's see zweb at gmail.com we save it great so it says 
you have reached your limit please remove some contacts before adding again now remember the effect is only used to show some ui or show some notification or log something should not be used to um, update the signal state because it can uh, lead to a uh, cycle dependence okay it would give a warning or an error in the case that you try to update a signal within an effect all right great now let's do another thing just one simple thing and that is uh, maximum reach to use maximum reach in our uh, add button as well so what we can do is we can just refer to this maximum reached here contact service dot maximum reached here uh, sorry uh, not the value but the signal itself okay let's also refactor this to just refer to maximum reached here okay and also we want to add a close button the snack bar so that we can close the snack bar okay and one more thing um, as you would have noticed that our add button was still enabled so we could still add our uh, contact even though we got the notification that the user cannot add it uh, let's see how we can actually add that functionality so we have a button here we can simply add a disabled here and we can refer it to the maximum reached signal here okay so that's another example of how you can control your ui state by using uh, signals or computed which change based on other signals. Okay, so let's try this out again. So we are going to do Zwave and Zwave at gmail.com and we have phone number. And now we can see that you have reached your limit. Please remove some contacts before adding again. We can close this and you can see that our add button is disabled as well. Now the interesting thing is that we uh, got this to work, right? But what if we delete a contact? What happens? So when we delete a contact, you can see that everything goes back to the same state that it was previously. The maximum reach updates it turns to false and when it turns to false our button is enabled again and we don't get a notification that we did previously so you can see that the signals uh, are sort of enabling our uh, ui reactive behavior in this and you can see the syntax is really simple you can use the signals in the same way throughout your app whether it is in the constructor whether it is in the effect here whether it is in your uh, template here whether it is in your service. So I think it will really help out uh, in the Simplicity app. Great. So I think we are done with the simple app and I hope you like the simple app. It's just to showcase how to use signals. Now, of course, in the future, I would want to build up on this and, you know, um, add some real API calls and showcase that as well. But uh, for now, this should be enough. And I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please uh, like and subscribe to my channel for more such videos. Thanks for watching.